Hallelujah. So today we're going to continue. We're going to build on. Okay, we are going to build on this girl. For those who are joining us for the very, very first time, you are all welcome. We've been having a great time. This is the fourth session. So if you have missed the other three sessions, please, just after I conclude, go and listen. We began with talking about this young girl, where she was growing up from. We began to talk about this young girl when she was becoming of age, you know, the developmental stages. We spoke about how powerful, how God created this woman. And so the reason why today we are going to transition and we will enter into uh, preparing this woman now to get into marriage, it is important for us to understand, I think we may have talked about, about I think 10 Ps that makes you a woman. So it is important we emphasize the thing of branding yourself. We emphasize the thing of knowing who you are. Before you take on an assignment to marry a man, you better know who you are because marriage is not child's play. And so we've been building. So today, before we actually get this woman and escort her into marriage, or before I actually bring in the aspect of marriage, I still want to make emphasis over certain things that I've also observed in most of us leaders and what we begin to go through, that which delays us. So we'll still pick it up and I've painted some of the things that I'm going to be talking about from the book that I've authored, The Make of a Real Woman. So you, in life, we are all given same opportunities okay we have same opportunities it is how you utilize those opportunities so i usually like telling people this thing when you begin from the book of genesis chapter chapter one the bible says you know god created the heavens and the earth i'm just going to to paraphrase god created the heavens and, and the earth and that aspect of genesis chapter one verse one has to do with vision Every woman must have heaven and earth completed in the mind. In other words, you must have what you are looking for completed before you actually choose to bring another thing in your life. So God is given us a template. In the very first verses of Genesis chapter 1, he has given us the template. And the template is you need to have a complete vision. You need to have a complete vision of who you are, of what you want to achieve in life. You need to wake up with a vision. You need to walk into marriage with vision. You cannot, you know, this thing where we think it is normal that you get married and you don't know who you are. You get married and you don't know what you are supposed to do is all wrong. This is why the divorce rate is very high because people think when they get into marriage, that is a time they are supposed to start discovering who they are. Here is a template. In the beginning, when the thing just started, God created the heavens and the earth. This created heavens and the earth, it is not the physical creation. It is the complete picture of the vision that God had. He had a complete picture of the heavens. He had a complete picture of the earth. Let me prove to you. When you walk into the verse, the verse two of your life, the verse two of your life, this that I'm giving to you works in every situation. When you are going through situations, when you're going through troubles, I want you to know, the only way you will survive, it is when you have a complete vision, when you have it all totally done up inside your mind. Now, when you look at verse 2, verse 2 is reality. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 is reality. What is reality? The reality here is that the earth was void. Darkness had covered the deep, but the spirit of the Lord was hovering. Now, I like making this analogy. I've talked about this. I'm going to talk about it again. When you begin to see verse 1 and verse 2, 
see the way a baby starts in the mother's womb. So when there is fertilization that has taken place, it is like Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. When fertilization has taken place, it is a complete picture. That fertilized ovum, if it's a girl, it's already done. Everything, the cells that are supposed to make a baby girl, the cells that are supposed to make the uterus, they are all part of the beginning of fertilization. Just when there is a mixing of the seed of the father and the egg of the mother, everything is complete. But what you begin to see is verse 2. Verse 2 is exactly what happens to your situation or to your vision. You need to pay attention to this because I need everybody to understand that marriage is not something you walk in and it is already done. Marriage is not something that you walk in and it's already beautified. For you who are in relationships, for you who are about to walk into relationships, yes, it can be all goody goody, it can be butterflies, it can be whatever. The reality of marriage. It is not that all that which you are feeling in your body, that's how marriage is. There is a verse 2 that you can meet in life. This goes also to business. When you are starting business, you must have the complete verse 1. You must have the complete picture. John. Why many people do not know where they're going? Why many people do not have their business plan? Why many people don't know which career to take? Because the vision is distorted. Every person must learn to have an understanding that verse 2 is no more. Verse 2 of anything is okay. Never run away when you find verse 2, which is reality. When you be entering into marriage, you will find verse 2 in that marriage. And verse 2 has to do with darkness, some dark situations, things that you did not understand, things that is reality. You wake up in the morning, if it's a man, you wake up to a, a face that has no makeup. This is verse 2. It is dark. There are waters. Waters may mean situations. Waters may mean you've just discovered some things that you did not even know. Waters may mean you have no money to start that business. Waters may mean you go for work and the things that you thought you are going to find at work or in your career are not happening. It's exactly what happened when you, you were in your mother's womb. In your mother's womb, when you went into the uterus, it was dark. There was darkness. There was waters that covered you. But guess what? The waters are needed. Some situations are needed for your growth. There are some challenges that you have gone through. And those challenges are necessary to your journey. There are certain exams that you have faced. Some waters are okay. Life is not a smooth sailing. You will encounter some situations. And that is verse 2. But let me tell you something. The reason why you are not going to give up. The reason why you won't let go of whatever you have seen in verse 1 is because there is a heartbeat. Come on now. There is a heartbeat. The Bible says, you know what? Even when it was dark, even when it, there was waters, but there was the, the spirit of the Lord was wovering. And the spirit wovering has to do with the heartbeat. Your purpose must have a heartbeat. Your business must have a heartbeat. Your career must have a heartbeat. Even when you crumble and somewhere you fall along the way, you get pregnant, certain things go wrong. Hey girl, I want to encourage you. As long as you have a vision and as long as that vision has life, you will make it. You will make it. So this baby in the womb of the mother, Many people may even start doubting. Many people may start thinking there is no baby. 
Many people said, won't even know the sex, but give it a moment. Building anything that you want to see or the beautifying something that you want to appreciate in life, you better know that sometimes you will find waters. And you better listen to me. What I'm talking about here is not some kind of Shipikisha club. I'm not encouraging marriage of Shipikisha club. I am talking to you about challenges that you may face in this great vision that you saw. I'm preparing a woman. I'm preparing a woman before I escort her into marriage. I need her to get ready. And getting ready, you better know that as you are getting ready, there are waters. As you are getting ready, there may be darkness. As you are getting ready, there may be situations that you did not anticipate. But girl, the moment you've gone through the waters, you've gone through the darkness, as long as you have the heartbeat, as long as you have the spirit, as long as there is life, you will make it. You need to get ready. Because many times we don't actually get into the details to prepare a young girl when she's walking into marriage. You think it is about his shoulder. You think it's about the joy that you are always having. You think it's about the time you are spending on the phone chatting. I miss you. I love you, babes. Oh, this, this, this. Hey, there are waters. There's darkness that you may find. But do you have some focus? Do you know what you want? Do you want, know what you want to achieve? Very important. That's the baby in the womb. Now watch this. When verse 3 shows up of Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. When verse 3 shows up, the Bible says, let, let there be light. Now this particular light, it is not the physical light. Because God came and created physical light in the fourth day when you read in verse 14. That is when he was creating the firmament. That is why I was telling you, God, first and foremost, created the heavens and the earth as a vision. But the actual creation was progressive. That is why, if he really created the heavens, why was he creating the firmament? Okay, so later on, he came and created physical light. He created the sun, the moon. This particular light, it is not the physical light. Many of you in relationships, you are looking for physical light. This is why what gives you goosebumps or butterflies is so wrong. You are looking for physical light. What you need to look out for in a relationship, what you need to look out for for your, anything that you want to undertake, you need to look out for understanding, illumination, revelation, insight. That is a light. Let there be light. You need to have that insight. There are many women who have missed out a man for their lives because they did not walk past verse 3. They did not receive understanding. They were looking for physical light. And because he did not have the muscles, because he did not have a big house, because he did not have a big car, they missed him. They did not get the understanding. They did not get the illumination. They did not get that inside light. That's what you need. In anything that you need to do, you need to have this insight. You need to have this illumination. You need to have this intuition. You need to have an aha moment, a light bulb moment inside of you, not in the physical. When you are getting into a relationship, it is not about his physical appearance. When you are getting into anything or you want to do a business, it is not about how this look, business is looking, lucrative business, that the way it is showing up. You need to know that there is a verse 3 of your life. In every circumstance, in any situation that you could be going through, you better know that there is a verse 3 that you need to seek out for. Look out for verse 3. Let there be light. This light is understanding. Seek for understanding. Whatever you are looking for. Marriage. Whatever you are looking for. As I'm preparing this girl. Some of you are already married. But in case you missed the, this verse 3 in your life. I would just want to introduce you. For you to have hope that you are able to 
do this thing, you are able to make your marriage work when only, if only you can be taken aback because some of you, you entered in a wrong way. And because you entered in a wrong way, marriage is shaking. And it is not the fault of your husband. It is not because he's sleeping around. It is not because he's not understanding. You may have missed out some important steps. But let me tell you, it is correctable. It is correctable. I hope you can still see me. My light has disappointed me here. But don't worry. We've got to move. It is very, very important for every person to have understanding that verse 3 is important for anything that you are doing. Verse 3, very important. In your business, in your career journey, whatever it is that you want to choose to do, you need to know there is a verse 3 that you need. Okay. Even a baby in the womb, verse 3 comes. This verse 3, it is an indicator of the contractions that the mother starts having. The baby is not yet born. But contractions have started. It is that understanding. Every woman will know I'm in labor just by the contractions. Even if you haven't yet given birth, you will know by the contractions. You have understanding because you start experiencing something that you've never experienced. There are indications that the Holy Spirit begins to give to you as indicators. And that understanding may be a no-go area understanding. The Lord may speak to, this is not the guy. But you keep on thinking, oh, I think, I think he'll change. I think something is going to happen. God has given you understanding that is not the one. Why do you think you are going to change it? Why do you think you are going to change it? There are a lot of indicators. And God, there is always a verse 3 in every person's life. There is nothing every person I've interviewed on the other side of the table. As I'm sitting on the other side, whenever you ask them about what they are going through, the situations they are facing, if you ask them how the relationship started, if you ask them, what did the mother say? What did your mother say? What really? They are indicators. They are indicators. They are indicators. Fast forward. You will see that in verse 9, in verse 9 of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, and God said, let, you know, he, he, he actually called out, he actually called out the dry land and he said, let the dry land appear. Let the dry land appear. The dry land was in waters. The baby is in waters. And there is a separation of the waters from the baby. The baby is alone. The waters separate. In order for you to appreciate what you need to be. Appreciate what you need to be. In order for you to appreciate your life, child of God separate yourself from the waters at one moment the waters may have been necessary for you to make headway in your decisions you cannot be overcrowded in problems you can never be overcrowded in a place of indecision you have to separate your butterflies if you want to make a decision for marriage Separate yourself from overwhelmed emotions because those are not the ones that will sustain you in marriage. You have to separate from the waters. Of course, the waters are the ones that helped you one time. So whatever it is that was happening, maybe you had butterflies, you felt like he's the one, helped you one time to love him, helped you one time to fall in love with him. But go for the marriage, you can never go in with waters. You cannot be born with waters. Kick out the waters. Kick out. The baby kicks out the waters. He separates. She separates with the water. So you see the mother draining the waters because life is about to be announced. That's exactly what is going on right now. As I'm carrying on this campaign, as I'm carrying on this campaign, 
It is important for every person to have an understanding. It is important for every person to have an understanding that there is a moment when you are given an opportunity to be called out. As I'm speaking in this summit, as I'm speaking to every person in this summit, there is a moment where you are being called out of your problems. You are being removed from the waters because time for you to express yourself has come. Whatever it is that is going on, is it divorce? Are you divorced? Are you widowed? Are you a single parent? Are you one who's looking forward to get married? I need you to have an understanding. There is a time when God calls out the dry land from the waters. But let's follow through the dry land. Each of you has something that you need to offer here on earth. But it matters how you want to bring out your greatness. Even through this same summit, there are some people been following me from the time we started. Let me tell you, every person will make a decision on how they need to execute their assignment. And so the dry land has appeared. The dry land has been separated from the waters. The baby has been born. We all have days. We were born. I was born on the 17th of April, 1970. They made an announcement. There is a baby girl. There are several people that were born the same day. Others were born the following day. Others were born the following month. We had opportunities. All of us, we were one day born. You are all listening to 37 people right now watching me. You all had an opportunity to listen to yesterday. You all are having an opportunity to listen to me today. How you choose to, to somehow apply the information is up to you. So let's walk. I'm not seeing comments. Do I still have an audience here? Is my internet okay? Are we good? Are we okay? Can I see some, some hearts? Because it's like I've my, my, it's like my screen has frozen. I don't know. I can't see any agreement here. Are we good? Are we okay? Before I go to verse 11. Abigail, send me a text and assure me that uh, because I'm not seeing any movement here. I'm not seeing anyone commenting anything. I can't see any heart. So you could be talking alone, yet people have disappeared. Are we all here? I need to build... The dry land has appeared. The dry land has appeared. So before I move on, I need an indication. Somebody talk to me on WhatsApp if we are all okay because it seems my screen has frozen. Are we good to go? I can't see anything on the screen, so you have to send a text. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Okay, we're good. Thank you, thank you. I've received the text. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's continue. Even if I my, my screen, I don't know what has happened, but let's build, okay? If you see any problem, please uh, let me know. Praise God. Okay, thank you so much for that indication. Okay, so now, in verse 11, okay, in verse 11, so this dry land now has appeared. Okay, this dry land has appeared. In verse 11, there are three character stances. You get to choose any of the character stance you want to become here on earth. As a girl, married, not married, single, at whatever level you are, you've got to make a decision what you want to become. You've got to choose what character stance you want to take. Even after this summit, you have to make a decision what you want to become. You have to make a decision what you want to be. So the first character stance, it is from this same dry land that had appeared, that was separated. Remember, this dry land was in the waters. Whilst this dry land was in waters, nothing could grow. 
from this dry land. That is why God called it out. When you are overwhelmed in problems, when you are always talking about problems, nothing grows in your life. The reason why you are not growing, it is not because of your marriage. The reason why you are not growing, it is not because of uh, uh, what your mother-in-law did. The reason why you are not growing in anything or be it somebody left you and whatever. It is not the person who left you. It is because you have refused to come out of the waters. You have refused. You still want to stay in waters. Let me tell you, any baby that remains in the waters of the uterus, nothing grows out of this baby. The baby has to push the waters to be born as earth, to come out so that things can start being announced in that baby's life. That's what happens to all of you. Even when this session, as I'm running these sessions, you've got to choose which way to go. So the Bible says from this dry land, three characters grew out of this land. The first character that grew out of the land is grass character, grass character. I see a lot of women. My heart bleeds. I see a lot of women. Grass character. Grass character is a character of low self-esteem. Grass character is a character where you let People stamp on you. Grass character is a behavior where you think your worth is in having babies. Where you just have to conceive from that man, conceive from that. Pardon me. It has to end with you. It is not fashion. The fact that you conceived outside wedlock, it is not something that needs to be allowed. It must end with you, not your children. You should not normalize it. It happened and I'm not being anything weird. It happened. You made mistakes. That mistake should not repeat and it should not be made to look normal. We should not normalize wrong things. It's a wrong thing. It's a wrong thing. If only you knew what happens to a child who's being raised up by a single parent. It is not good. It is not good. They is a husband and the wife must be together but circumstances circumstances but even if there are those circumstances it doesn't mean because there are circumstances now we normalize a wrong situation no now grass character is where you think by sleeping with a man that is when you have the worth no there is no worth in sleeping with a man who is not your husband there is no worth that you get if anything, he takes away something out of you. He takes away something out of you. If you're not married and you are intending to marry that man, if you keep on sleeping together and raising those altars, that same, if you, you've normalized the sexual things, you've normalized it, even in marriage, please go and normalize his behavior. It's okay for him to sleep around because if he is sleeping with you when you're not married, it is okay for him to still sleep out there because it is not sin. You didn't see it as sin. Why should you see it? You, why should you see it as sin afterwards? You are a custodian to these things. Low self-esteem. Now, this grass character is a character that fails to pick up itself. Every time people are stamping on you, every time you are being looked down upon, every time you are the one who's nursing a broken heart, it is grass character. I've got an example in the Bible. There's a story of a young girl. Her name is Tamar. The Bible there in 2 Samuel chapter 13 records that she was a daughter of the king and she had a coat of many colors, beautiful coat of many colors. I'm told of a young man and his name was Joseph. You read in Genesis chapter 37, you see that Joseph also had a coat of many colors. So in other words, they had similar circumstances, similar situations. Coat of many colors, coat of many colors. The Bible says, Amnon, the brother, the stepbrother to, uh, uh, to Tamar, lied that he was not well. He was sick. He deceived Tamar. The Bible says, Joseph also, his brothers deceived him. They deceived him when he went to take the food to them. He, they, he, they deceived Joseph. 
And the Bible says, Amnon raped Tamar. And as you know, when a, a, a virgin is raped, there is blood that comes out. And the blood stained the coat of many colors. The Bible says the brothers to, to, to Joseph, they killed a kid God. They got the coat of many colors off Joseph's body and they put blood on the, on the coat of many colors. Joseph's coat of many colors. Similar situations. We go through similar situations. Don't sit there and think you are the one who's been crushed too hard. The severity of the situations may differ. The issues that you've gone through may differ. But let me tell you, we all have gone through some situations in one way or the other. So you're not going to sit there and remain grass character. You're not going to sit there and remain grass character. Not at all. You've got to push yourself. You have to push yourself. But grass character, even when... It has opportunity. Grass character remains in that place until it is bent or other people are just sitting on it, sitting on it until it disappears. That's grass character. You have to refuse. The Bible says, Tamar told the coat, the coat of many colors after she was raped. She told the coat of many colors and the Bible says she, wore, she went into the wilderness crying because of what had happened to, to, to her. Similar situation happened to Joseph. Joseph left the home. And immediately when the coat of many colors was taken off his body, they put, you know, blood of a kid, kid got. You know what they did? They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites and went away from his place. Similar situations. Similar situations. But you know what has happened here? Later on, when you read down in the, in the same chapter uh, 13, from this, I uh, think from 27, building up down there, you see that Amnon was killed by Absalom. This same rapist was killed by Absalom. You know what? I usually imagine this, and please help me now. I need to imagine this. Allow me to imagine. I only imagine there is a chapter 14 that has been born after Tamar hears Amnon is dead. How Tama should have written another chapter. And this chapter would have been talking about how this girl shows up one more time. And I want you to watch this. Imagine if Tama had written 2 Samuel chapter 14 because her story, if her story had picked up from the ashes, how that the mighty have fallen and the daughter of Zion has arisen one more time, adorned in papal. And this daughter has arisen. Oh, cry not, daughter of Zion. Even when you've been abused, this is how you must arise from the abused situation. This is what you must do. Because as I went through and Amnon did this and this to me, this is what happened to me. And then I arose one more time and I pushed myself out. Imagine how we could have had a chapter, a reference. Many of you, the situations that you have faced in life, the grass character type of situations would have helped you to arise and you become an epistle for people to learn from. But many died a sad story. The Bible is very stubborn. It actually indicates that after two full years, Amnon died. After two full years. When you watch with me, Genesis chapter 41, verse 1, the Bible says, after two full years, when Joseph was in prison, after two full years, Pharaoh had a dream. That is a time for your character to be tested. Because this particular time, Pharaoh has a dream. Do you know how many people have dreams without interpretation? Because you are sitting on interpretation. Do you know how many people are waiting to hear you? That having children outside wedlock, it is not good. Do you know how many are waiting to interpret the dream of Genesis chapter 41? 
Do you know how many people are waiting to hear you talk? how that you need to get ready when you're getting married never look at his shoulders never look at whatever it is beyond his physique how many people are waiting several people are waiting to hear the interpretation of what this marriage is all about come on you've got to arise help another girl out there who has gotten excited because of his looks help another girl out there was a reason to get married without having an understanding because you've gone through it it is time for you to arise and interpret other people's dream. The second thing that grew out of vegetation, it is a shirab. Shirab grew out of that same dry land. Some lives are shirab character. A shirab is something that is not deeply rooted. Never enter into marriage if you are not deeply rooted. Never enter into marriage if you are shirab character. Shirab character is a character that does not go deep into wisdom. Many girls, listen to me. Many of you are listening to me right now. You opted to spend so much on your wording, but you never spend on wisdom. You never spend on workshops. And I've been announcing, buy this book. People fail to buy this book, but you know what? They would rather pay so much money to somebody who works at MTN to give them a printout of their husband's WhatsApps. That is shrub character. It's a character that gives you shallowness. What will you do if you see who he's been talking to? What will you do if you now follow him? There are women who are buying even trackers. They are putting trackers in their husband's cars to watch wherever they are going. Are you into slavery? Don't you have a life? That is shrub character, not deeply rooted, not deeply rooted. So you are following things that are not adding value. Girl, if you want to be ready for marriage, you can never be shrub in your wisdom. You can never be shrub in the way you carry yourself. You can never be shrub when you are having a conversation with him. That is a time for probing. That is a time for spiritual mapping. You've got to know where he's coming from. You've got to understand his lineage. You've got to understand who his father was. Why did he divorce the mother? Why did he die at a premature death? Because if you don't understand those things, you are next in queue. You are next. Shrub character is where you don't value depth. You don't value certain things. You are just going in in love. There are many girls. They spend more on a wedding dress. They spend more. Nothing wrong. It's your only time. It's your only beautiful time. But you balance. As much as you are spending time on rehearsals, learning how to dance, the dance on the wedding shall not sustain you. But if you spend that time with a good coach, a marriage counselor, somebody who cooks both of you, somebody who puts you into the real things, the real story, not all these things, oh, pray together, oh, love each other, and then have sex, what, what? Not all that cheap, cheap stuff that we always get sometimes. It is shrub character. So many people will be so busy, very busy doing rehearsals, very busy buying nice suits, never spend on workshops, never, never spending on books, on marriage. How are you going to get into marriage with somebody you don't even understand? How does a man think? You will misinterpret his silence. You will misinterpret the way he will do things. Shrub character. Anything, I'm going. Oh, you know, you like, many women, you like using hysterical behavior to threaten a man. You like using tears to threaten a man. Men are never moved by most of the things. You know, that's why most of these women's meetings, we shouldn't be just on our own. We need to be inviting men in most of these meetings because we sit sometimes to cheat ourselves. Some of the things that we talk about, a man is not even in them. In them. He's not even in them. So your hysterical behavior doesn't threaten anybody. Your tears won't threaten anybody. I tell ladies, please use those tears to worship. Go to your mentor, go and cry all you like. Never show your tears to a man to think that's when you attract attention. 
They never moved by tears. Never. Shrub character. Be deep rooted. And you know shrub character. When a wind comes, it scatters all the seeds outside. And then you think it is by the makeup. You think it's by your all eloquence. You think it is by buying for him things. No, 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 no. That scattering of all your seeds and whatever that are not covered. That way you go to him without being covered, without protecting your reproductive system. It is shrub character. Today I was sharing somewhere. I was telling them to say, look, if he cannot hold himself, first and foremost, before you walked up into his life, where was he taking his erection? When he had an erection, what was happening? Now you appear on the scene. And you think you are the savior for his erection. What is he taking you for? You know, what is he taking you for? So it is very important for you to know that if he cannot quench his own appetite, girl, you'll be pregnant. And sometimes you may not even have strength to make love. You have a baby. For the first few weeks, you cannot make love to him. If he can't hold himself now, how is he going to hold himself for six weeks? You are making him get used. And some of you, those are things that you are reaping now that needs to be corrected. There's a lot of unfaithfulness because you allowed unfaithfulness whilst in a relationship. So the fact that we did what is wrong, let's correct our children. Let's correct our children. Let's talk about what is real. Let's tell them the consequences of having sex before marriage. Let's tell them that. Very important. The last thing that is growing out, I don't know if we escort this girl into marriage. I don't know if she'll enter. She's still lingering around. The third thing that is going on with this girl or with this um, um, dry land that has come out of the waters, it is fruit-bearing tree. Fruit-bearing tree. Now, now, before you actually see this tree growing, before you actually see what you planted, the seed, you know what happens? This fruit-bearing tree first goes right deep inside to check for the waters. Root. Begins to develop the root. That is character development. Begin to develop the root. That is for you going to school, ensuring that your career is in alignment. Your career comes first. Your future, you need to deep root your dump and just think your, your, your face is what will sustain your marriage. No, let you be rooted. Even not wishing you anything that is negative, but even when something goes wrong in this marriage, at least you are deep rooted. Even when he can, some ladies, let me tell you, some ladies did not want divorce. They did not want, they, nobody, can I tell you something? Nobody goes into marriage looking for divorce. Nobody. You all go in to go and make it work. But circumstances have caused some people to be divorced. Circumstances have caused some people to remain widowed. But let me tell you, if you are not deep rooted, you cry foul. If you were floating into his wealth, if all you went into, into this relationship was his money and you have no deep rooted, oh my God, the moment things don't go the way you plan them to go, how do you survive? Be deep rooted before you invite another person in your life. If you did not do that and you're already married, please just begin to improve yourself again. It is not too late. Be deep rooted in character. Be deep rooted in the way you use your intellect. Be deep rooted. And then as you are now shooting out and you are coming out, do you know that whatever it is that is coming out there, it is as a result of the root, how deep the root has gone. That is what you must be as a woman. You cannot be shaken anyhow. You cannot be grass anyhow. You cannot be a shrub. You have to be deep. Nothing should just move you anyhow. That is why the Bible says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, have dominion and subdue. It is important for every woman to learn how to subdue, to have dominion, to dominate. That is what a tree does. A fruit bearing tree first dominates the space. That is your space. 
You need to dominate you. You need to be in charge of you. You need to be deep rooted before you bring another human being in your life. Be deep rooted. Be deep rooted. And then when that happens, that is when you begin to see now a little flowers coming out and a fruit shows up. The seed is inside. The seed is inside. Don't easily show yourself to a man. Hide the seed. Hide your worth. Let's tell this to our children. Let's tell this to our girl children. Hide the seed in the fruit. And as the fruit ripens, when you are ready, when now he marries you, when he bites the fruit, oh my God, because any tree that is deep rooted, any tree that has got its roots down into the waters, the fruit is very sweet. The fruit is very sweet because you waited. If you didn't wait, we can still do some corrective measures measures have to do with you rededicating your life back into that position where you need to be taught i'm telling you the truth i had to go back to being taught after seven years of being in marriage i haven't lost anything even up to now i am still attending progressive lessons refresher courses i don't lose nothing the things that I didn't know, things that I refused. Me and my friends, we were in that era, Pentecostal era, where we thought everything that had to do with, you know, cultural teachings was demonic. We didn't want to be taught by elderly people. We were these young prophetesses, you know, prophetess. <laughs> Sometimes when I look at the young girls who are mushrooming in ministry, how I wish I can just have a big conference. Bakashana tuwali pita mamli yo life. Tuwali pita mo na ifwe. Where we thought we, we are some to my little, little girls with callings. <laughs> Nishna to each tao den, you know. Prophetess Shani, prophetess what, prophetess what. We didn't want any cultural teaching. We called it demonic. And we entered through the windows in tongues. You know what I'm talking about. We didn't want all this. No, it's, it's, it's backward. Nay, I can't go through that. Why is my friend? Why should I be kneeling before him? He's just a, a good friend. And me, my husband doesn't mind, you know. We are great friends. So he doesn't mind all these things, you know, backwardness and all that. We are of this generation. We are sweethearts. Today there is, um, as we used to call each other, sweethearts or honey. Now it's babe. Is my babe. So he doesn't mind this. Okay. We entered. Shanda da 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 da. We entered through tongues. We landed. Hey, people. Tongues started disappearing. Tongues started disappearing because reality now settled. And you look around, you see, you can't even speak those tongues you were thinking. Prophetess. In the bedroom, what prophetess? <laughs> People, some of us, it's by the grace of God. This is why I'm so passionate about marriage. Passionate about marriage because I know that if we can only add value to our girl children, marriage is lovely. If only we can add value to our girl children, we are going to have strong marriages. We are going to change the narrative. This is why I still go through teachings to today. When there's a young girl who's being taught and my mom, who's a trendy alangiz, is taking them, I also sit there. I want to always listen and get some refresher course. I always want to remain a bride. I always want to learn. Why? Because let me tell you, when you learn and you become the best, you know, a tree that is so deep rooted, even when you find a stone, when you are a tree that is a fruit bearing tree, when you find a stone, you will still navigate and you will find waters. You know what? You will realize life is no longer just about you. A fruit bearing tree, life is no longer about the root. It is what comes out of that. The root won't be complaining. How come I'm not being praised? How come I'm not being told I'm beautiful? How come you've done this, this, this? It is why your emotions die. Finally, as I conclude, 
with this particular one because I thought today we walk up into the marriage. Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Let your mind receive circumcision today. Move out of grass character. Stop blaming circumstances of your life. Move out of grass character. Move out of being wanting to be validated, but wanting to be affirmed. Move out of shirab character. Move out. Learn to be the fruit-bearing tree. And other people are waiting to partake of the fruit. Other people are waiting. The moment you are now about to enter into marriage, you need to know you are entering. And as a fruit, other people will partake. And sometimes as they partake, do you know what will happen? They will duplicate you. Your good will make your husband happy. That is why the Bible says, he who finds, he who finds. Some of you, has your husband been receiving favor? Ever since he married you, it has been pain marrying you. As he's going to marry, will he obtain favor? Fruit bearing tree, that should be your desire. Tonight as you go to sleep, fruit bearing tree. Help me, Lord, to stop being like grass character, to stop complaining and to stop just being short, not growing in anything being the same, angry, and forgiveness. I'm fed up of this. Blame shifting. Tell God tonight. That is the word I needed to bless you today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine over your life. You become that fruit-bearing tree that other people benefit out of your life, that your worth is going to shine, that everybody will see the deep-rooted that you are when they partake of your fruit, when you open your mouth to talk, when they partake of your fruit, when your husband makes love to you, when they partake of your fruit, when you cook that food, they will say, whoa, and so shall it be upon your life. Shalom, shalom.